Astronomers say they have discovered the largest planet-killer-sized asteroid in eight years and that the huge space rock will cross Earth's orbit. The asteroid was reported by researchers looking for space rocks within the orbits of Earth and Venus. I spoke to astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, Brad Tucker, a short time ago. Brad, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Is this going to pose a risk to Earth? Not right now, at least, and not for the next few centuries. That's always the good thing. Um, but this is a category of asteroids that we worry about. They come near the Earth, and importantly, they cross the path or our orbit around the sun. Uh, and this is the issue with these hazardous ones, is that as they go around the sun, they continuously cross the path that we go around the sun. So at some point, it could be too close for comfort. Now. The, the good thing about this is one of the reasons why it wasn't seen until recently is it's on the opposite side of the sun to us. So it's always very near the sun, meaning it's kind of like in our blind spot. So they're hard to see. But by being in our blind spot, it also means that they're very far away from us now and will keep staying that way. So um, while we know that at least for the next few centuries it's not going to pose a problem, uh, we do need more data to confirm will it ever in the future get closer to the Earth. But again, not something we have to worry about, at least anyone watching this television program, I think is a fairly safe assumption. Well, thank goodness for that. Uh, some calming words there. But I've got to ask, why is it called a planet killer? Can it really have that ability to completely kill everything out there? Well, kind of, yeah, and that, that's the problem. You know, this one is about 1.1 to 2.3 kilometers. So when it hits the Earth's atmosphere, firstly, it essentially explodes with thousands worth of nuclear bombs of energy. It then hits the ground, creating a huge tsunami. Even on land, it would create a tsunami through the dirt, kicking up a whole bunch of stuff in the atmosphere, blocking out the sun, killing the plants, which then kills the things that eat the plants and, and so on and so on. So it's that category that, yes, can catastrophically change life on Earth. Uh, and so these are the ones that we do worry about. Now, luckily, um, there are not as many of them. Uh, and, you know, they don't come that close to the Earth all that time. But we do know 66 million years ago or so, one about 20 kilometers hit the Earth and ended the life of the dinosaurs and other species as well. So that's what we worry about here and, and why we pay attention. Well, it's good to know, though, we will not have to worry about that in our lifetime. So uh, some relief there. Now, Brad, yeah, right. on another matter, China has launched the final part of its space station into space. So what does it mean for its operations there? Yeah, so, you know, China has been obviously rapidly growing their space program, as we've chatted about a few times, and they set their uh, fairly ambitious goal of completing their space station, the Tiangong Space Station, this year. In order to do that, they had to send multiple main modules into space and multiple missions to not only service those modules, but have astronauts up to complete it. And so the WEN-10 module, which is that third and final one, as he said, was sent up just a few days ago, earlier this week, and now marks the completion of that process. And I know, and just to put the scale here, the International Space Station took years to assemble. China has done this in the better part of 18 months. So moving at a very fast pace uh, to get it ready. And when they set that ambitious uh, deadline earlier this year of completing it by the end of the year, you know, there were some, we all kind of knew they would get close. We, we weren't sure if they would make the uh, timeline uh, that they set, but they surely did. Uh, speaking of which, though, a Chinese rocket booster tumbled back to Earth overnight. Why is that? And, and also, why has it been so controversial? Yeah, so the same rocket, the Long March 5B, that took up that module, the design of it means that when it comes back down to Earth, it's uncontrolled, meaning that there's no thrusters or steering to deliberately point to into the Earth's atmosphere. Because usually when you do that, that means you can come crashing down at a very specific point and land at a very specific point, ideally uh, the ocean, most of these things in the South Pacific Ocean. But this design is not controlled, and that means that it just slowly decays due to the Earth's atmosphere, dragging it slowly down. You don't know when it's going to come down, and, but, and therefore by when, you don't know where, because this thing is traveling 25,000 kilometers an hour. Being off by two minutes is something the width of New South Wales. So um, it's essentially a design flaw that they have not changed. 
Now, when they launched the previous two modules, the same exact thing happened in uh, late July. One of the rocket boosters from their previous module broke up over Malaysia. Last year, we had bits of it that landed in the Indian Ocean, and everyone knew this would have would have happened again when they sent up the final module as came to fruition. So it's a bit of the international community doesn't necessarily make you do this. It's usually a best practice, and it's left up to each country. Luckily, it did splash down safely in the ocean at 10.01 p.m. last night, just off the east coast of New Zealand. Uh, people in Melbourne and Burnie, Tasmania, I uh, did see it about 10 to 15 minutes before it uh, essentially broke up and splashed in the ocean. So, you know, it definitely came close to Australia as this thing was happening. And what are the dangers then of having so much debris tumble back to Earth like that? Yeah, you know, this thing weighs about 23 tonnes. Yes, it will break up in the Earth's atmosphere, but you still get large chunks coming to the ground. And if it lands in a populated area, it you know the damage can be quite uh, confronting. Luckily, obviously, this wasn't the case, but it just shows that we do need better practices. We had space junk that came down from SpaceX uh, in Australia in July as well. So it's not just China. With so many things happening and so many things being launched, that risk of debris coming back down uh, is getting bigger and bigger. So it is up to countries to solve this, saying you can't just leave it up there forever and you can't just say, hey, you know, hopefully it works. You need to have a plan of bringing it down. And the U.S. has been changing their rules, the FCC, about this. Uh, the Australian government and the Australian Space Agency has been leading, actually, the world, I would say, by making companies in Australia or who launch overseas but are based in Australia um, as part of their licensing requirements, have a plan to bring it down because you do not want this stuff to come in a populated area and cause damage and, and potentially worse. Well, exactly. I mean, you think it would be logical that there should be plans yeah. uh, in place for this already. Just finally, Brad, there will be a total lunar eclipse or a blood moon, as it's known, next week. That's right. On Tuesday, all of Australia is really in for this treat. It's a, it's a great event, this total lunar eclipse. That's when the moon passes into the Earth's shadow. And as it does, it becomes darker, and then it becomes that rich, beautiful red color as you're seeing here. Uh, and this is essentially because a little bit of sunlight skims the Earth's atmosphere. So kind of like sunrise and sunset is orangey red, a little bit skims out, goes off into space and lights up the surface of the moon. So when you see that reddy, browny orange color, you're actually seeing sunrise and sunset of the Earth lighting up the moon. It's a long total lunar eclipse lasting almost an hour and a half. So on the east coast of Australia, it starts about 8.09 p.m., going until uh, about 10.49 when totality ends, an hour earlier for Queensland, and shifted accordingly for the other states, South Australia, Northern Territory, and Western Australia. But everyone gets to see it. Everyone will have a great show. And it's also, like, human-friendly time. It's not at 3 or 4 a.m. It's right after sunset. So a great chance to go outside and look. And you don't need any special equipment with the lunar eclipse, like a solar eclipse, which you do. Lunar eclipse is completely safe to look at. Good to hear. Well, we are all in for quite a nice treat then next week. Brad Tucker, thank you so much for joining us as always. Thanks. Take care.